Hey YouTube. This is my uh, thoughts on uh, something that uh, I just kind of went through. Um, I'm a veteran, so uh, I'm also uh, somewhat disabled. I don't like being disabled, but it is what it is. Once you get deemed disabled, it's kind of hard to get out of that, that, uh, whatever they call it, that niche or whatever. Uh, but, uh, it is what it is. And, uh, I've been disabled through the VA for a while. Uh, but before being disabled, I was working a lot, but. Ever since I got disabled, I ended up in the VA system. So today, uh, I called up uh, this uh, veteran organization about possibly getting some help with housing because uh, we're kind of getting priced out of our housing right now. Uh, rent's going up like five, six hundred more dollars. And uh, we just uh, can't really afford it. Uh, it's just too expensive, just like everybody else, you know. Um, and it, I don't, I don't know if it's an American thing or what it is, but um, it, it just, it just is what it is. It's kind of, it's kind of strange. It's kind of disheartening because I kind of rather be at the beach. Uh, but even then, you probably end up homeless at the beach, so. There's only so much you can do. But I called this uh, organization that helps uh, veterans who are homeless. I'm not homeless, but um, obviously getting closer to possibly being homeless. Um, so I called him up, and this, this guy gave me a list of numbers. And he seemed very helpful. You know, he's very, he's a, I guess he's a veteran himself, I think, or I don't know. But he was very, uh, somewhat helpful and, uh, gave me a list of numbers and, uh, then, uh, I thanked him and, uh, hung up and I actually called the numbers. Uh, one of the numbers, uh, was the, uh, American Legion. And, uh, I was told that the American Legion can help you with, uh, possible housing, uh, food, money, whatever help with your rent and stuff like that. And I talked to the person on the, uh, uh, in the American Legion when I called him and he said, no, we don't do any of that. We don't, you know, give like money out or we don't help with housing or anything like that. So I said, well, what do you guys, what do you exactly do? It's like, well, what do you mean? I said, well, what do you do? I mean, if you're not, you know, you help veterans or what do you do? He said, well, no, no, we don't really help veterans directly. We kind of give money to, uh, we help out, we work alongside with organizations, and the Red Cross and this and the other. And I was like, yeah, it's, sounds kind of typical, uh, kind of a, maybe a money funnel sort of, you know, where, you know, let me, we'll just scratch your back, you scratch ours. And I just uh, basically got the, uh, basically just kind of got the runaround. And uh, wasn't really surprised. I mean, no, nothing surprised me. When you've eaten out of garbage cans, nothing, nothing in this world really surprises you. You just, just kind of blow it off, whatever. Uh, and then another one I called was a place uh, that I was told that would help me with a job. Uh, he said, based this guy that I initially talked to basically said, I think I could probably, you know, this would really help you because you have a rating and you could definitely probably get a job with the, uh, with the VA. <laughs> I was like, okay, we'll see how that goes. And, uh, and I called the number that he gave me and basically they said it was a Hispanic lady. And I wasn't even sure if I was calling the right number or not, but the lady basically told me, uh, Oh no, we don't, we don't do that here. Uh, you have to go on USA jobs to, to do that. Um, 
but no, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't help people with the hiring process, with hiring veterans or anything like that. We just, you know, you have to go on use USA jobs. So I didn't even ask her what they actually did. Um, and then uh, there was one other number uh, that is the, uh, I think, the National Coalition for Homeless uh, Veterans, NCVA. Um, and uh, in the end, what I really got was a, uh, a final referral to go to DAV, it's a, uh, American Veterans or Disabled American Vets, I think it's called. And basically, you can go there and they'll help you out with uh, doing uh, some paperwork on getting an upgrade on your rating. Something to that effect um, where you can get, uh, get your rating increased. But I wasn't really even looking at wanting to get an increase in my rating because I don't really, I don't really care about it. I, I think that's the main thing is I just don't really care either way. I'd rather be working for my money is what it, what it boils down to. But since I'm uh, disabled because uh, of a hearing loss and a meningitis, which I really don't like, I mean, uh, I feel fine, but I do have these somewhat limitations, I guess, you know. Uh, which all started when I initially went to the VA years ago and tried to get help when uh, basically when I did go there, uh, I ended up being referred to the psychology department, which I think most veterans do end up in the psych, psych area because it's kind of like a funnel. It's like, okay, well, we're just going to direct you here and then you'll go here and then next thing you know, you're sitting in a little psych ward or something. Um, but basically, uh, uh, I was told uh, that they could not help me at the VA initially and had a uh, psychologist basically walk me to the door and say, and do everything they, they could but kick me in the ass, which I'd have gladly taken because uh, it should don't bother me. I got my ass kicked in the field as an electrician, so whatever. I kind of like it. Uh, so... My whole uh, view on it all, on this whole uh, VA system and, and how, it's, uh, how it works and everything is kind of like, I guess you just kind of get to the point where you're just like, eh, whatever, you know, who cares? Because it is, kinda, it's a system, but the system is like not really designed to help those in need, but rather to funnel, it seems like to funnel money from one organization to the next, um, or to basically tell you that you're all screwed up and that we can't help you. So I was fortunate in the one sense that I did get a rating, which took me 40 years to get, because um, I had hearing loss, but they never told me about it. They had it in my records, but never told me about it when I was discharged from the Marines. So, at this point, um, I can fully understand uh, why people end up homeless and stuff like that, uh, especially like older people, because older, th this is a society that, that functions on productivity. When you're no longer productive, you're more of a burden on society. And if you're a burden, then we don't want nothing to do with you. And uh, so, so the value of a human being, uh, in my opinion, in the United States, is only based on what you can perform, what you can do. And <clears throat> I was also looking at psychology. So psychology, uh, people, uh, they get degrees in psychology. And I found that... Um, a lot of people uh, are dropping out of like college um, because of the fact that, and a lot of it's in psychology because there's this, it's an oversaturated field. So many people try to get into psychology 
and it's just an oversaturated field. So you spend all this money going to school, and then you're just kind of like, kind of like screwed. I mean, maybe you work at like 7 Eleven, get a job at 7 Eleven. Uh, something like that. But for the most part, uh, that was my that's my little story on contact with the VA system. Uh, and if you ever go into the VA, uh, you kind of notice that it's more, it's not really like, it's, it's not, it's not, there's nobody working hard. It's just like bodies taking up space so they can get a check. That's kind of the way I look at it. And there's a subtle passive aggressiveness to it all. As far as the veterans are concerned, there's a there's almost like this. It's not a disdain, but it's almost like, uh, what now? What do you want now? Oh no, another veteran. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like that. It's like, uh, I have to deal with this. So, I've kind of gotten to a point where I'm like, I don't really give a shit. About what you think of me or what you, uh, you know, your freaking life. And I don't really give a crap anymore. Uh, I haven't for years, though. I don't really give a shit as far as all that goes. Um, when I went to school as an electrician, uh, that's when I realized that, you know, how society really works. And, uh, and I can tell you that I've worked around a lot of inside buildings where there were ladies on computers sitting there doing their whatever on the computer, playing solitaire, acting like they're working or whatever. And we would have to go in and do the work above their heads. And they thought that was the worst thing in the world. And a lot of times we were either restoring power, uh, fixing power, fixing uh, troubleshooting stuff that was going on in the building or installing new devices and stuff. And a lot of times it was for so they could be on a computer. And what you would get from them is somebody looking up and going, oh, no. Are you really going to do that above my head? You're going to get my hair all dusty? Are you really, you really have to do that now? And I'm just putting it out there because that's the reality. When you go in there as a tradesman and you're doing, trying to do your work, You've got these freaking opinionated people who are just sitting on a computer that know nothing more than to stare at a computer and punch in numbers, complaining about somebody who has a skill to keep their computer working. But yet they still got to complain about it. And that's one of the reasons why I don't really give a crap anymore. Because I've seen it all. I've seen the ticked off ladies, pissed off because you're working above their heads. Um, I've seen it. I've seen it all. I saw it all in the trade. Doesn't mean I'm a better person at all. It just means that uh, I kind of have my life cycle of doing that kind of work. And I got to the point that I don't want to waste my time uh, doing it. Because... I don't want to have to look, have, be working above somebody and have them complaining about how somebody's putting dust on their head while they're staring at a computer. So I have my little story on the VA, call with the VA this morning. And uh, if you ever want to, uh, I've got something here I'd like to show. If you ever want to go into a trade, um, uh, you go into electrical trade. This is what I received for going through electrical apprenticeship. And you can see the date is 2003. I went to school back in 98. But they gave me all these little papers. All these seals, Congress of the United States. Awarded a certificate of recognition. State Senate. It's 
Certificate of Recognition presented to Dave Don Eagle. Completion of the apprenticeship program. And finally, my apprenticeship completion of the Associated uh, Builders and Contractors Craft Professional. This is what I used to do. And, uh, and I've, I've graduated to the point where I don't give a shit. Uh, I also have uh, DD 214s uh, from the Marines and from the Navy. Now, both the Marine Corps and the, uh, let me tack this back up on there. But I have them from both the, uh, <laughs> the Marine Corps and the Navy. And uh, sometimes I wonder, was it even worth it? Um, the Marine Corps took, takes you four years. Four years of hard work. Uh, taking orders from people. People telling you what to do. Four years. Constant work. Uh, the Navy I went in for two years. Not so hard, though. Navy Reserves, not too hard. Uh, the electrical apprenticeship program took uh, four years. And then I worked another 10 years in the trade, about 10 years. And, uh, but a person like me now is basically had to resort to calling up the, uh, the VA and asking if they have anything for homeless veterans. And, uh, it's just crazy. Uh, I never thought I'd, my life would get to that point where I, I would actually be concerned about uh, how I'm going to keep a, a roof over my head um, when I used to work putting roof, putting uh, stuff together. But this is, uh, this is America, and this is a land of opportunity, but also a land where you could easily find yourself floating down the lake, in a kayak with a destination unknown. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is my story on the VA, and I had no idea what it was about. I don't even really care. Uh, I do have something here. Though. If you want to keep yourself active and moving, get out on a Dogtown skateboard. Dogtown Skateboard, this has the indie trucks. This is my true love, surfing, skating, uh, biking, uh, playing guitar. I like to play guitar. I like uh, playing guitar, uh, bi riding bicycles, uh, going to the lake, going fishing. But uh, even that, it's not free. You still got to pay for that. So... Land of opportunity. There you go. Thanks for watching.